The construction of this apartment building in Berkeley, California is locally referred to as soft story construction because the posts that support the front are not braced. Work is being done by Dennis Cameron as part of a mandatory soft story retrofit program implemented by counties across the state. All of this work is generally limited to the soft story. It's a two-story conventional frame building. Without it, a building like this would likely collapse in a major earthquake. The details on this job were specced by an engineer, and some of them actually exceed the prescriptive code. A moment frame will be installed in the face of the center bay. Along the sides, shear panels will stiffen the walls and hold downs will tie them to the foundation. At an odd shaped area in the back, continuous plywood shear panels will cover the walls. Stucco is cut away above to make room for continuous structural straps called lateral force collectors. They will also install a continuous strap all the way across the rim joist to tie the floor system together. The moment frame comes in pieces and is assembled on site. Lifted into place with a bobcat, the frame will be bolted to the floor system above and cast into a footing below. Bolted connections between the head and legs are called fusible links, which will allow some seismic movement without snapping the bolts. These elongated holes right here, ever a, a movement back between here, gives a little bit of give. Along the sides, they've broken out stucco on either side of the first floor windows and doors to make room for hold downs, anchor bolts, and shear panels. Threaded rod is epoxied into holes in the foundation for the hold downs and anchor bolts. The holes are drilled nine inches deep. They're cleaned out with compressed air, and then a wire brush is used to demonstrate to the inspector that holes were indeed cleaned. The inspector also watches as the holes are filled with epoxy. Slowly screwing the threaded rod into the hole eliminates air pockets in the epoxy and completely surrounds the threads. Studs are doubled wherever hold downs are needed to provide enough depth for the three inch structural screws. At the top of the wall, the double top plate is anchored to the rim joist or to existing blocking with more hardware. Out back, under the second floor framing, stucco was cut away to make room for diagonal collectors which are fastened to new LVL blocks attached to the joists above. This method was devised by the engineer to avoid the expense of installing another moment frame. The plywood panels are fastened with 10 penny nails, four inches on center along the edges and 12 inches in the field. They have to be staggered and then they have double studs where the joints come through. Along the two by 12 rim joist, a 26 foot continuous collector ties the floor system together. All of the holes are filled with Tico nails on this strap because the only backing is the one and a half inch rim joist. So 16 penny nails would be overkill. Additional hardware connects the rim joist to the double wall plates. When all of the hardware is installed and inspected, another code must be met. And this is uh, insulations required now between the 2012 CRC California Residential Code. Whenever you open up the walls, you need to add insulation. And when this building was built, insulation wasn't really a thing yet.